Hey there, welcome to The Uplift. Boy, do we have a great show for you today and a great cast of characters as well, starting with a special delivery of 50 dogs. We'll tell you how they made their way from Kentucky to New York City. Also, two friends who made a name for themselves at their senior living facility. What's the talent that made these two fellas stand out? We'll explain. Also, Star Trek actress Sonequa Martin-Green has a touching tribute to the groundbreaking Nichelle Nichols and the passions that connect them. Also, a family that has made the same treat for 60 years. What's their specialty? Plus, a man who stunned the running world when he qualified for the Boston Marathon in a very unusual way. What did he do? We'll talk about it. All that, plus our most heartwarming videos, the ones you just need to see. You're watching The Uplift. Welcome to The Uplift. It's a show that lifts you up, you and me included. I'm Tony DeCopel. We're going to begin with those heartwarming videos, the ones you've got to see. And we're going to begin with this one. It shows a bride named Laura in her wedding gown visiting a senior facility to surprise her grandmother. Hi. Laura's grandmother has Alzheimer's and was not able to go to the wedding because she had been sick around that time. Laura says her grandma has been her best friend, though, since she was born and makes sure to visit her every day she can. So, of course, she had to see her on her wedding day. Our next video shows 11-year-old Zoe at Disneyland. Zoe there in the pink shirt happens to be deaf. She was shocked when she walked up to Anna from Frozen and Anna started to talk to her back in sign language. Her mom said that most characters do know how to say a little bit, like, nice to see you. So when Anna started saying much more than that, Zoe was thrilled beyond words to be able to talk to a princess. And what did they talk about? Zoe's trip to Disney with her family, also their favorite rides, of course. It's a great story. Ellie Ani moved to Japan when she was six months pregnant, and then the pandemic hit. That meant she couldn't see her mom for two years because the borders of many countries were closed. Well, they finally reunited for the first time. And her mom, Solange, got to meet her daughter, Alani, now two years old. There's the moment. Oh, it's beautiful. A mom named Tabitha, meanwhile, was filming a sweet moment when her newborn baby, Ava, did something that absolutely shocked her. Oh! <laughs> Ava was just three weeks old when she lifted her head up and planted a kiss right on dad's cheek in oh response to his. God. Oh my God, it's so sweet. Oh, we need a moment. All right, ever wonder how fortune cookies are made? Well, there's no better company to show us than the Golden Gate Cookie Company. They make about 14,000 cookies a day and it's been doing so for 60 years, CBS San Francisco's Reed Cowan shows us inside the factory. This is our life. This is my life. Golden Gate Cookie Company owner Kevin Chan. I don't count. Doesn't count the cookies, so we did. 14,000 cookies a day, 365 days a year, and at 60 years, that's more than 300 million cookies from this same place and the same San Francisco family. She's the one that mixed about it. Nancy Chan is the cookie matriarch and maker of a family that has become a San Francisco institution known the world over. As Kevin approaches the 60th anniversary since Nancy first opened the doors, he knows. We should honor her mom. I got a long way to live, but she don't have much time. 73. Other fortune cookie makers moved out of Chinatown into big factories selling to global restaurants. Many didn't make it. So the Chans made a choice, keep it local. Why did you keep it right here in the street? I want people to come into San Francisco and taste one of our authentic San Francisco invention, American products. I don't, you could have been I, way richer. I could do that, but that's not my point. My point is the communities, the people. The community. Yeah, communities. Where do you guys come from? People like this family from the Netherlands, whose children saw the Chan family cookies with wonder. I got people coming all over the world. Where do you come from? Poland. Poland! This is our pie, a San Francisco pie. So whether you're a cook, a baker, or a candlestick maker, do what you do as an act of service. And the payoff? Serving is happiness. Happiness is serving. 
brings the best fortunes and the sweetest treats. Come for the cookie, stay for the fortune. That's a great piece. Coming up, meet the rescue dogs who made their way from flood-ravaged Kentucky to Manhattan's Hell's Kitchen neighborhood. There they are. Plus, what links Star Trek actress Sinequa Martin-Green with TV pioneer Nichelle Nichols, who also starred on the same show decades earlier? It's more than just acting. How did a group of 50 dogs make it out of Kentucky after devastating flooding there? CBS New York's Dave Carlin has a story. New York City welcomes this live cargo special delivery. A crowd of canines from Kentucky, 50 of them rescued from a state where its eastern section is ravaged by flooding. This is Stella. Stella, the puppy, gets handed off. It feels so good. Two foster owners, Stephanie Kajukum and Adam Lernahan. We are excited to get our dog a friend for a couple of weeks. This is toast and this is butter. The Hell's Kitchen Animal Rescue Muddy Paws partners with shelter groups in Kentucky, North Carolina, and Texas, helping ease severe overcrowding and making sure the focus is on dogs of all ages, including older dogs who are at risk of being put down. Aneta Pazdarova is fostering a young and tiny twosome. Brother and sister puppies. They are named Lima and Lentil. Pazdarova was given care instructions for the short time they'll be together. A little heart attack every time you let them go, but you know, that's the goal. That's why I sign up for it. This transport van will leave empty of these guys, but a delivery is coming next week. Foster, adopt, donate. Um, please do so with any organization. Everybody really, really needs the help right now. And here's video we were sent of Stella meeting the other dog in her foster family, Bailey, settling in nicely. And here are Lima and Lentil, loving their new foster home, all with a second chance at life. Lima and Lentil, the only thing cuter than the dogs themselves are their names. Actress Nichelle Nichols, who died last month, left behind a lasting legacy of advocating for others. And fellow Star Trek actress Sinequa Martin-Green is following in her footsteps on screen and off. Caitlin O'Kane has our next story. I know this is going to be difficult <laughs> to talk about her. Um, she's very much 1,000% actually a hero. Sonequa Martin-Green is talking about groundbreaking actress Nichelle Nichols, who recently died at age 89. They appeared on the same show decades apart, but there are many parallels between the two Star Trek actresses. Nichols was one of the first black actresses to star on a TV show. Martin-Green is the first black female captain in Star Trek history. Nichols advocated for women and people of color as a recruiter for NASA. Martin Green is following in her footsteps, working to help women and girls in STEM. There's such a dearth of, of women in STEM careers, um, and, and especially black, uh, black women, uh, Latina women, um, indigenous women. It, it's 10% it's um, in STEM careers today. So we need more of us out there. And, and that's why I jumped at the opportunity to do this. She partnered with Million Girls Moonshot, an organization that aims to get 1 million more girls into STEM learning opportunities. Frito-Lay has donated $100,000 to further the program's mission and to send girls to space camp. Martin Green surprised 16 girls, the first group that the organization is sending to space camp, presenting them with ceremonial stars named after them. I was so excited for them to see my face and see see you know my love and support uh for them i hope that this is, a, is an experience that they carry with them i hope that it's something that sort of sets them on their path whatever whatever that path may be or wherever it may lead she said programs like this wouldn't be possible without nichols it's all because of her really <clears throat> because she's the one that uh you know helped integrate nasa way back then um, she's the one that said, wait a second, I don't see what I need to be seeing. I don't see equality here. And she dedicated the rest of her life to it from, from 1977 to 2015 um, to establishing these programs in NASA. And now here we are. And these girls can have this, this kind of experience. So I am, 
I'm very grateful to be a part of it. Martin Green hopes to continue Nichols' legacy on and off screen. I know she said when, when she was still here, she said, if you if I've inspired you at all, then I just ask for you to continue this legacy. So of course now all of us that have been inspired by her um, can do that. And I hope that these girls can do that too. Wow, what a beautiful connection there, Caitlin. Nice piece. Coming up, why the books in this Chicago shop make an impact as soon as you walk in there. Plus, two retirees who use their talents to make a name for themselves in their senior living facility. And a man who made history qualifying for a marathon in an unusual and unexpected way. What did he do? We'll show you. Stick around. You're watching The Uplift. Two friends in a senior living facility didn't want to completely give up work after they retired. CBS San Francisco's Andrea Borba shows us how they get their fix. The first rule of the wood shop at Stone Ridge Creek Retirement is clean up your sawdust. We're about a third of the way through this project. Of the 79,201 residents of Pleasanton, only two are known as the Fix-It Guys, 80-year-old Rick Levesque and 95-year-old Phil Wire. When Rick and his wife Kathy moved in after a 40-year career in nuclear physics at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, he needed a hobby and fast. After twiddling my thumbs for a few weeks, I said, I got to do something. I'm going nuts. After building a desk and a model wooden ship, Rick found himself in the wood shop five hours a day, seven days a week, just to get off the sofa. He and Phil carved out a niche as the fix-it guys for the residents of Stone Ridge Creek. It's a, a continuum of furniture pieces, broken lamps, all kinds of crazy things that are broken come into this shop. We, we have built a reputation with the residents. If it's broken, bring it to the shop. They'll fix anything. The craziest thing they fixed? One of them was a gentleman's dentures. No joke. What do you need? He pulls out his upper palate and he says, my dentist hasn't been able to fix the burr on this tooth and it's causing an ulcer. Not a problem for these two. The hardest was uh, a wine barrel making a uh, bar out of it. Today, retired salesman Phil is working on a hexagonal planter box. But it's not just about busy hands keeping minds young here. It's mostly about this. There's a picture of it on the web. And this. Yeah, he does everything I tell him. We, we gripe about the music. We gripe about the sawdust on the floor, all kinds of things. But we gripe with a smile and we have, we have a good time. The work of serving their fellow residents is a secondary priority to camaraderie. Without this, uh, I don't know what I would have done. We can fix anything in this shop but a broken heart. They're hard to fix. Proving liquid nails can hold more together than just wood. We're good friends, and, uh, and we let learn that here. There's always meaning in work. It's a beautiful piece there. They say never judge a book by its cover, but at one Chicago bookstore, the covers make a powerful impact. Here's Adriana Diaz with the story. Step inside the Chicago Children's Store and enter a new world. We get a lot of gasps from children. Really? <laughs> we do. We've had parents and adults cry in the store. You know, it can be emotional for some people. Emotional, because at Kiddo, the faces on the books are black and brown, and protagonists you don't usually see. A girl in a wheelchair, a mom in a hijab. These are deliberate choices, says Kiddo owner Kiwa Nurula. We want every kid to feel reflected, to feel seen, to feel included. Kids with disabilities, kids who are growing up in foster care or have been adopted. Why did you like these books? Because I like the pictures on them. With titles like Queer Heroes, Hair Love, and the ABCs of Black History. Beeswax crayons that show Wow. 
the different skin shades. Oh, I wish I had these growing <laughs> up. Oh, oh. Nurula introduced us to some regulars. Ryan has two beautiful, brilliant mothers, and we have an um, exceptional daughter. And so we want her to be represented in the books that she sees. Nurula got into this work as a new mom. She didn't see options that reflected her family, so she made them. Do you have a business background? Not at all, <laughs> not at all. This is her background, the performing arts, where she also embodied diversity in an unexpected way. I'm a retired princess, Disney princess. Um, <laughs> if you ever wanted to know what happens to them when they grow old. When they grow up. <laughs> when the Princess and the Frog came out, I was one of the princesses in the show at Disneyland. Come on down. You're always thinking about your representation on stage and what that could mean for a little kid who wants to sing and dance too. Your total is... 15, but business 15. is in her blood too stretching back to her great-grandfather. Simeon Neal Sr. was a tailor, and he had a family in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He had a tailor shop on Black Wall Street, and his family was forced to flee uh, during the massacre of 1921. They made it to the south side of Chicago, where they reopened the family business, an entrepreneurial legacy that lives on here. We don't want any child to feel isolated in their experience. We want them to come into the kiddo store and say, oh, wait, I'm not the only one. And when books have heroes of all backgrounds, real world heroes are born. So many layers of that story. Great piece, Adriana. Coming up, how running changed one man's life and the unique way he qualified for the Boston Marathon. Stick around. Markel Taylor's life changed when he joined a running club in a place that you might not expect. Our David Begno has his story. If you were to say to Markel Taylor, hey man, what is your secret to success? He just might say, if you fall in life, just get up and keep running. At 49 years old, he is gearing up for the Chicago Marathon this fall. The streets of California is where he trains. That's where I was raised, right here. Not bad for the views. Nah, it's beautiful. But for nearly 18 years, Taylor could only dream of training in this scenic city by the bay from his window at San Quentin State Prison. When you got sentenced, did you think you were going away for life? Yes. Yeah. I didn't think I would never get out. In 2001, he physically assaulted his pregnant girlfriend. When she went to the ground, she said, I felt like the baby stopped moving. The instinct came on again, like, what the hell did I do? Why did I do this? What the hell is going on? So they convicted you for the death of your son? Yes. After you abused his mother? Yes. What was the sentence? They made it 15 years of life. It was a life-changing moment for a man who says he was a victim of violence as a boy. We would get abused if the dishes ain't washed or if the house ain't clean or if it ain't clean to their specifications. Then we would get whooped out of our sleep out of your sleep? Out of our sleep. Did something about that say to you that, hey, hitting people is how you handle things? Yes, that was that connection there. Growing up, did anybody tell you they were proud of you? Only my teachers. Ironically, it took going to prison for him to hear words like that again. Inside, Taylor joined the 1,000 Mile Running Club it's a track team at the prison, led by volunteer coaches. His speed earned him a nickname, Markel the Gazelle, they called him. It's a story that will be highlighted in a documentary coming out soon. How many races did you run in prison? Every month we had a race. How uh, many did you win? I won every one of them except for one. What were the euphoric feelings that you got running in prison? I got an emotional high. An emotional high. An emotional high. Uh -huh. It was also because when I ran, I ran to honor my son. It was like that, you know what? You made a mistake, but keep running. We have faith in you to be a better person. Nice, Markel. That faith 
stemmed from the kindness of his coaches. Strong, finish strong, head up, nice. Like Diana Fitzpatrick. Great workout. You have a choice when you end up at a place like San Quentin and you can just lay around and let the time go by and wait for something to happen, or you can take control of your life and try to do something with it. And Markel, someone who really chose to do something with his life. Did it ever occur to you that you showing him that he mattered yeah. is maybe why you got the best out of him? I guess I always believed in Markel. Okay, stride. And trusted him. It makes me feel happy. Mm. So, I... Yeah. With that support, Markel Taylor did something that has never been done at San Quentin before. He ran a marathon that was so fast, he qualified for the 2019 Boston Marathon. And get this, a month before the marathon, he was released on parole after serving nearly 18 years and they gave him special permission to race. I couldn't really enjoy Boston because I was still being happy and appreciative of just being free. Well, this spring he went back and ran Boston again, off parole and truly a free man. What was the time then? 2.52 flat. And that is a time so speedy he placed in the top 5% of all the runners. It's now your drug. Exactly, it's now my drug. But it's a positive, good drug that don't hurt people. That's right. It helps people. No! He's been given a new starting line at life. He's now got his own one bedroom apartment where he's starting to cook again. He got promoted at the grocery store where they took a chance on him. His boss told us, he is a humble warrior. Have a good day. Man. Thank you, man. New opportunities for a new man who's moving in the right direction. What do I see in your eyes? Someone that stopped running, that don't need to run no more, that can stand up to all my fears and anxieties. I feel like I signed a pledge of being nonviolent, and I know that not only do I owe it to myself and the people who I victimized in my lifetime, I owe it to all those who are counting on me and people who are looking for me to be a, a positive influence in their life. All right. What do I look like? What is my tombstone going to say later when I pass? What would you like for it to say? That he fell, but he got up, and he changed the lives of a lot of human beings for the better. That's why I keep doing it. And sometimes I have to do stuff like this to continue to validate myself. This type of stuff helps keep you accountable, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. That's what it is, the accountability. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. And that is our show. I want to say I hope it brightened your day and lifted you up, but I know it did with pieces like that. Stick around for our next uplift. In the meantime, I'm going to go for a little walk and find some more good stories. See you again soon.